हरे जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद So tonight we're going to speak about the first time to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We need translation? Anybody need translation in Hindi? Or we can go in English? English. English? How many English? Please raise your hand. All. All. Okay. Any Hindi? Any Hindi you don't understand? मुझे थोड़ा थोड़ा मालूम है नहीं आप नहीं तो इधर बैठिए इधर बैठिए इधर बैठी है नहीं तो उधर कोने में हम लोग करेंगे महाप्रभु लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु अपेयर इन दोली धाम ऑफ मायापुर मायापुर सिचुएटेड इन द सेंटर ऑफ नवद्वीप नवद्वीप मीन्स बंगाल Actually, the greater part of Navadvip is Goramandala Bhumi. Goramandala Bhumi includes not, you know, Navadvip is the nine islands, but outside the nine islands, you've got places like Katwa, where Lord Chaitanya went to take sannyas, Ekachakra, where Lord Nityananda and many other devotees came from. And you've got places like Shantipur also, which is the home of Advaita Acharya. So, like that, the, the Gora Mandala Bhumi is a bigger area. And of course, Gora Mandala Bhumi, Navadvi, Mayapur, they are the best places in Bharatvars. Bharatvars is the best place in the universe. And the best place in Bharatvarsh is Navadvip. And in the center of Navadvip is Mayapur. And it was in Mayapur where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advented himself in the year 1486, so 538 years ago. So we, we celebrated 500 years, I remember. I was already a devotee. We celebrated the 500th anniversary of the advent of Lord Chaitanya in Mayapur. So now it's 538 years. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared at the request of Advaita Acharya. Before Lord Chaitanya appeared, many other devotees had already come. Advaita Acharya, particularly. Was a much elderly person than Lord Chaitanya. When you see the picture of the Panchatattva, Advaita has a beard, white beard, grey hair, right? Grey hair. It, he's much older than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's, he's like the grandfather almost of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was Advaita Acharya who called for the Lord to come. Advaita Acharya is an incarnation of Mahavishnu. 
and Sada Shiva combined together, they come in the form of Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of the Lord. Nityananda is the expansion of the Lord. Nityananda means Lord Balara. And Gadarhar, he is the internal potency. Gadarhar Pandit, is the, he is the form of Srimati Radharani. She comes in Chaitanya Leela as Gadarhar Pandit. And Narada Muni also comes in Chaitanya Leela. And Narada Muni comes as Srivas Thakur. So Panchatattva, five truths. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadaka Sri So we say Panchatattva, the five different features of the Lord. So Advaita Acharya appeared first and he, although he is, he is Lord Vishnu, he is Vishnu Tattva, just like Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, they are also Vishnu Tattva. Vishnu Tattva means we offer, can offer lotus, tosi leaves on the feet, on the lotus feet. We only do that for Vishnu Tattva. We don't put tosi leaves on the feet of the Guru or any devotee. We only put tosi leaves on the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we can put, Advaita Acharya we can put, and Nityananda we can put. But we don't put on Gadarhar, we don't put on Srivas. You'll see in Mayapur the deity, sometimes they wear the Tosi garland. So the Tosi garland is given to Chaitanya, Nityananda and Advaita. So Advaita is Vishnu, but Advaita came and he could not he, 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 he could not deliver the people. He saw the condition of the people, that they're very fallen. They were spending all their time worshipping demigods like Chandi and Durga and so many other different persons they were worshipping. And they spend all their money on marriages. They'd have very big marriages for their family members. And when it came to worship the Lord, they have no money. <laughs> so Advaita was thinking how to deliver the people, how to help the people to come to God consciousness. So he thought himself unable to deliver them. But then he read in the Shastra that the Lord becomes captivated by anyone who offers Ganga Jau and Tosi Pata. So Advaita Acharya, his home was in Shantipur. Shantipur, 500 years ago, was beside the Ganga. Have you been to Shantipur? Anybody? Yes. You went to Shantipur? Yeah. You went to Shantipur? Well, Shantipur, it's about, it's, it's about like one and a half hours from Mayapur by car. Not very far away. So Advaita Acharya was living there. Haridas Thakur also came there. He was, Haridas was a very close associate of Advaita Acharya. Sometimes they say Haridas was initiated by Advaita, but we never heard anywhere in Shastra. The people in Shantipur may claim that, but we don't see it in the Shastra. Rather it said Haridas Thakur never took initiation because all he did was chant Hare Krishna. So if you don't want to get initiation, you have to just chant Hare Krishna. How much? As much as Haridas chanted. Three lakh every day. Three lakh names means 192 malas. One, can you chant that many rounds? Did you ever chant? Did you ever chant 60, 64 mala? No? Yes, yes. 60, 64 malas 
that is one lakh name. Every day Haridas would chant three lakh names. <laughs> so Haridas Thakur did this for many years, he just chanted the holy name. So Advaita Acharya was there and Haridas Thakur was at the home. So Advaita was worshipping Ganga, he was offering Ganga Jal, he was offering Tosi, and he was calling to the Lord, please come, please come. He would call out, please come. <laughs> so Advaita Acharya he gets the credit for bringing the Lord here. And the Lord came, of course he didn't come in Shantipur, he came in Navad, he came in Mayapur because he appeared in the womb of Sachi Mata. The father is Jagannath Mishra. Now Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra, they were, they'd been trying to have children for a long time and there were eight daughters who appeared and they all, they all, <laughs> they all, they were miscarriages. Eight children all disappeared at birth, left the body at birth. So they're very worried for Mother Sachi and Jagannath Mishra, naturally want to have a child. So it happened that finally they got a son, and that son, that is Vishwarup, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's older brother. He had an older brother, Vishwarup. And then after Vishwarup, then the second son came. And he was born on the day of Purnima, in the month of Falgun. Yeah. Falgun? Falgun, yeah, it means March, somewhere, February, March. Comes in mid February, first part of March. So, on the Purnima, and at that particular day on the Purnima, there was a clip, there was an eclipse. So all the people had gone to take bath in the Ganga. They'd all gone there to the Ganga to take their bath, and they were all chanting the holy name. Everyone was there in the Ganga, and they were chanting the holy name. And the Muslim, I said the Muslim people were also chanting because the Muslim people, they ridicule the people, right? <coughs> they ridicule, they were saying, ah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> they were all chanting, they were laughing at the Hindus. They were laughing at all the Hindus. So everybody was chanting. This was the occasion of the birth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it, it's an indication of the purpose of the child's appearing in this world, that he has come to establish the Yuga Dharma, right? Kali Yuga Dharma, Hari Nam Sankirtan. So the Lord has come to establish the Yuga Dharma. That is the external reason for him coming, to teach people the importance of the chanting of the Holy Name. In every age there's a process. In the Kali Yuga, there's only the chanting of the Holy Name. There's no other process. Other ages, there were other processes. Satya Yuga, meditation. Treta Yuga, yagna. Dwapara Yuga, temple worship. Kali Yuga, only Sankirtan, the chanting of the Holy Name. So Lord Chaitanya came to teach that the chanting of the Holy Name. And when he was born, everyone was <coughs> chanting. And as a baby, as a young baby, the, the only way that mothers could get him to stop crying would be when they would chant the Holy Name. They had to do kirtan. And only then the baby would become happy and smile. And so the, the mothers were all laughing. They were appreciating this child likes very much the chanting of the Holy Name. And of course, he was born underneath a Neem tree. So the, they gave him the name Nimai because the mother had already lost so many children. 
So they thought if we give him the name Nimai, it will help to protect him from anything inauspicious. So he got the name Nimai. He also got another name Vish, uh, Vishwambar. Vishwambar means the maintainer of the universe. And another name which he got was Goranga. Goranga. Right? Because his body is all golden color. The one who has the golden color. Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming in, in the mood of Srimati Radharani. And we say, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi. Radharani has a golden colored body. Her complexion is also golden. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come and he is Krishna, but he has come in the mood of Radha. So therefore, he's become golden outside. Inside, he's blackish, Krishna. But outside, he's golden, like Radha. Right? Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna, Nanya. Right? So Radha and Krishna have come in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is Krishna. Krishna means blackish. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not blackish. He is golden because he is in the mood of Srimati Radharani. Why does he want that mood of Radha? Because that is the greatest pleasure in serving Krishna. Radha enjoys more than Krishna. And Krishna likes to enjoy. Krishna wants to be the supreme enjoyer. But he saw the gopis and Radharani are all enjoying more than him. So he has come to exhibit the mood of the gopis. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared there in Mayapur and performed many wonderful pastimes with his parents. One day some thieves stole him away because mother had decorated him with nice ornaments. So there were two thieves and they, they saw the little boy and they thought, oh look, this little boy's got so many valuable ornaments. Let's steal him. Let's take him, kidnap him. We can take all of his ornaments. And so they, they took the little boy and they took the little boy away and they, somehow they went around in a circle and they came back <laughs> and they found themselves in front of the house where the little boy had come from. So this was Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu had bewildered the thieves that he allowed them to take him and to go around and come back to where he lived. <coughs> so that was one pastime. Another pastime, there was a deadly snake, a big cobra appeared. And Mahaprabhu, the little boy Nimai, is playing with it, laying on it, just like Lord Vishnu lays on Ananta Shesha. This is the pastime of Mahaprabhu. He enjoys these kind of pastimes. As he was growing up, his older brother, I told you his, he had an older brother, so Mother Sachi and Jagannath Mishra, they wanted to get the older brother married. They thought, he's getting old enough now, we should get him married. So when Vishwarup understood that the mother and father were planning his marriage, he disappeared. He left home. And then later on they found out he'd gone and taken sannyas, meaning he won't come home again. So Mother said she was very disappointed. So she, she didn't like that her son should renounce the world like that. So she thought, if our other son, if Nimai also gets education, then he will also learn that there's no point, there's no purpose in the, this world. And he will also want to renounce the world. He may also take sannyas. So Mother Sachi and Jagannath Mishra, did, they decided we won't send Nimai to school anymore. Because if he goes to school, his learning, material world, is all trouble. It's so many problems in the world. So, he, if he gets education, he will also want to renounce and become a sannyasi. So we won't send them to school anymore. 
So Nimai didn't go to school anymore. So what did he do? They stayed with, he went with all of his friends and they, they made a lot of mischief to everyone. Wherever there were little babies, they go around and pinch the babies and make them <laughs> cry. And then they would go in people's homes at night and they would put a big blanket over their heads and, and they would make really strange sounds and frighten people. And they would do all kinds of mischief. And one day Mother Sachi found Nimai, he was sitting where all the garbage, where all the clay pots, because 500 years ago, you know, if I, there was no plastic, there was no, everything was clay, clay pot. So they'd throw the clay pot in the gra into the hole. There, were, there was no garbage, you know, so they'd make a hole in the ground and now everything would be thrown into the hole. So one day Mother Sachi came and she saw Nimai is sitting in the hole where all the broken pots are. And what's he doing? He, he, he's eating the clay. Mother Sachi said, what are you doing? You're the son of a brahmana and you're sitting there in that filthy place. And Nimai said to her, how do I know? You don't let me get any education. I don't know anything. You won't let me go to school. So you cannot expect me to do anything good. So Mother Sachi, anyway, she brought Nimai out and told Jagannath Mishra and said then all the neighbors, they all came and they told Jagannath Mishra and Sachi, look, send Nimai to school. Whatever's going to happen will happen. Whether he takes sannyas or not, it will happen. But you should let him get education. So Nimai went back to school and of course he became a very great, he learned everything. Just like Lord Krishna, when Lord Krishna was a young boy after he killed Kamsa, Vasudeva and Devaki wanted Krishna and Balaram to get education. They went to Sandipani Muni's ashram and they learned everything in six, 64 days. There were 64 arts and they learned all the arts, one art each day. They learned everything. So Lord Krishna, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he also went to school and he learned everything. He learned all the Sanskrit grammar, all the rules. And he learned, he became very expert in logic, nyaya. And he would like to argue with people. And he would go everywhere arguing with people, debating with them. And then he, he was only a young boy, a teen, just like 12, 14, 13 years old. He opened his own school and began to teach. And it, as after he opened his own school, it was then that Digvijay came, Keshav Kashmiri, who was called, he was Digvijay, means one who has conquered everywhere. Keshav Kashmiri was a, a big pundit and he was going all over Bharatvars challenging people to debates, and defeating them. So when he came to Navadweep, because Navadweep was the center of learning at that time. So all the other pundits were afraid. They thought, oh, if Keshava Kashmiri comes and I cannot defeat him, then I will be ruined. I will not get any more students. So they all said, I have to close the school for a few days. I'm going home. I have some. <laughs> yeah, they all made some excuse to avoid seeing him. But Nimai Pandit, who was Lord Chaitanya, he was having a, a school. And they, he would teach every day. They would sit on the bank of the Ganga and Mahaprabhu would teach to them. So it happened one day, Keshava Kashmiri came there and he had a big procession and he's riding on an elephant and you know, it's a, so many people following him, he's very famous. And he came there and then he saw Nimai Pandit is there teaching. So Keshava Kashmiri comes down and he comes and speaks to Nimai Pandit 
And he said, oh, I've heard you're, you're a learned scholar. You're, you're teaching Naya, you're teaching logic. You have your own students. And of course, Nimai Pandit, he's very humble. He says, oh, I don't know anything, I'm just a young boy, you're a great pundit, you're the person, you're a great personality, I'm nobody. So Lord Chaitanya, Nimai Pandit, said to him, please compose some poetry in praise of Mother Ganga. So immediately Keshava Kashmiri began to recite poetry. Some people can do that, you know, they're very ex they can compose poetry spontaneously. So Keshava Kashmiri began to recite many verses glorifying Mother Ganga. Many, many verses he spoke. And Lord Chaitanya, Nimai Pandit is there listening, hearing. Thank you. <coughs> so Lord Chaitanya heard all the verses from Nima, from Keshava Kashmiri and then he said, oh, your poetry is very nice, you're very good, great. But he said, there's some faults, there's some defects in your poetry. And Keshwa Kashmiri was shocked. He said, what? In my poetry? Ha, no, there's nothing wrong with my poetry. My poetry is all perfect. How can you say that? So then Mahaprabhu said, well, you know, what about this verse? And there was this one verse, and Mahaprabhu then quoted the verse. And Keshwa <coughs> Kashmiri was astonished. He said, oh, he said, I recited the poetry just like the wind, how could you remember my poet or my poetry? Mahaprabhu said, the Lord gave you the power to compose poetry, he gave me the power to remember. <laughs> and then Chaitanya, Chaitanya Nimai Pandit then began to tell the good, the faults in the poetry and he showed Keshwa Kashmiri, that there were faults in his poetry. But at the same time, Nimai Pandit also said, there's some good things in your poetry also. And Nimai Pandit then pointed out the, the, the good things in the, in the poetry which he composed. Lord Chaitanya Nimai was very kind to him. The other students, they were laughing. They were saying, see, ah, our teacher has defeated him. They were laughing at him. But Nimai Pandit told his students, no, no, don't laugh at him. He's a great scholar. He was actually a great devotee of Mother Saraswati. Usually people in studies and education, they will worship Mother Saraswati. <coughs> so this Keshava Kashmiri, he was all the time worshipping Mother Saraswati. And when he was defeated by Lord Chaitanya in this way, he was very, he thought, I must have offended Mother Saraswati. So that night he prayed to Mother Saraswati. He said, did I offend you? I did something wrong. You let this little boy defeat me, just a young boy and he defeated me in debate. I must have offended you. What, what did I do wrong? And Mother Saraswati told him that that is no ordinary boy. He is my master. That, bo that young boy, he is my master. He is the Supreme Lord. He is Swayam Bhagavan. And he has come in this Kali Yuga. So Keshava Kashmiri came and he surrendered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it was a great victory for Nimai Pandit. He defeated Keshava Kashmiri when he was just a young boy. And then next thing that happened was 
Lord Chaitanya had taken initiation, he'd gone to Gaya, his father had died, Jagannath Mishra had died, so he went to Gaya to do Shrad, to do the puja at the Vishnupada in Gaya. Right? Did you go to Gaya to do Shrad for your ancestors, for your relatives, departed soul? Did you? Good. Yeah. Go to Gaya. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told his mother, I want to go to Gaya, I will do Shrad for my father. So he went to Gaya and that was where he got his diksha. He met Ishwara Puri. He had already met Ishwara Puri before. Ishwara Puri had come to his house in Mayapur, but now he'd gone and he met Ishwara Puri in Gaya. And he requested Ishwara Puri, give me diksha. And he did. He gave him diksha. He gave him the, the holy name to chant. So when Mahaprabhu, after being initiated in Gaya, he came back and he came through Kanai Natsala. Have you been to Kanai Natsala? You don't go any place in there. <laughs> you just stay here all the time, is it? You never go anywhere. Kanai Natsala, very special, very mystical place, right on the bank of the Ganga. We have an Iskon temple there. One Babaji, he owned the land and he came to Mayapur and he gave the land to us before he departed from the world. So we have built a temple there. Very, very special. Kanai Natsala. This Krishna comes there. When Krishna is dancing Rasa Lila with Gopi, sometimes he will disappear. He's dancing with the but sometimes he sees the gopis are becoming proud. Gopis are thinking, Krishna is dancing with me, right? So Krishna does not like the gopis to become proud. So sometimes he will disappear from it. When he disappears, he will come Kanai Natsala. A very, very special place. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came from Gaya. He came there to Kanai Natsala and he was chanting the holy name and Krishna appeared to him. And Krishna appeared to him. And Krishna appeared in front of him and, and then Krishna disappeared. And when Krishna disappeared, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, Oh, Krishna, where has he gone? Where did he go? Because Krishna had come. But then Krishna disappeared again. So he was always thinking, where is Krishna? When will he come? <coughs> this is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the mood of the gopis. The gopis are saying, <coughs> where is Krishna? Right? Do you chant Gopi Gita? Yes. yes. You know Gopi Gita? Yes. Yeah? You chant every day? Some days, sir. During Kartik. During Kartik, chant. Good. Yeah, chant, chant. We saw Gopi get, gopis are searching for Krishna. Anxious. So Mahaprabhu was in Kanaina Sala, Krishna appeared and then disappeared. And so Mahaprabhu was always thinking, where is Krishna? When will he come? So he came back to Mayapur. And he met all the devotees and he told them, we won't sleep anymore at night. We will have kirtan every night. No need to sleep. We spend so much time sleeping. We will have kirtan every night. And so he would go to Srivas Angam and have kirtan. And in this way Mahaprabhu would be chanting, but the neighbors didn't like it. The usual <laughs> problem. <laughs> Everywhere, all over the world, we get this problem. Neighbors. <laughs> Nasty neighbors. <laughs> Why you people make so much noise? They will always say, they don't like all the noise, right? So, 
they were having kirtan and the smarter brahmanas, smarter brahman means they're not really brahmans but by birth they're brahman, jati brahman. They follow the rules and regulation. They like to follow all the brahman but they don't have the qualities of the brahman. So <coughs> smarter brahman. And they went to the, the Chan Kazi and they told the Kazi, they're having, they're making so much noise all night, we cannot sleep, you have to stop them. We're not getting rest at night because they make so much noise. So the Chan Kazi came with the soldiers. They came to the home of Srivast Pandit and they, they told everyone, if you don't stop this kirtan, we'll make you all into Mohammedans. <laughs> because in those days it was very easy to make people into a Mohammedan, right? You just get the water and throw the water. And if a Mohammedan throws water on you, you're a Muslim. <coughs> you lost your caste. So it happened. <coughs> just like there was one man uh, there was this one, Subhudi Rai. He, he was uh, made into a Mohammedan. So he asked the Brahmanas, what do I need to do? They said, only thing you can do, you have to drink boiling ghee. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> drink boiling ghee, ghee means you'll, you'll die. If you drink boiling ghee, you'll die. So he didn't know what to do. But then he met Mahaprabhu. He met Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya told him, you go to Vrindavan, serve the Vaishnavas, and chant the holy name. So he did. He served the Vaishnavas. He would make nice rice for the Bengali devotees. <laughs> because the Bengalis couldn't eat braj roti. <laughs> braj roti, very hard to digest. You know. so he, would, he, would make, he would get rice and feed all the Bengalis. So he was a very nice devotee. And this way he got free, kept it, became a pure devotee, went back to God. So Lord Chaitanya, when they, when they threatened, they broke the Madanga and they told all the devotees, no more Kirtan. They broke the Madanga and then they, they threatened them, we'll lock you in the jail, we'll make you all Mohammedans, you'll lose your caste. So they told Lord Chaitanya, oh, you know what happened? They broke the Madanga. They, so Lord Chaitanya called, said, call everyone. Everyone should come. And they had a big procession and lakhs and lakhs of people all came and they had a big procession through the streets and they were chanting, kill the Kazi, kill the Kazi. <laughs> and, they, and this way Lord Chaitanya met with the Chan Kazi. He met with the Chan Kazi and they talked. And Lord Chaitanya asked the Chan Kazi, why are you stopping the Sankirtan? And the Chan Kazi said, no, 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 I've changed my mind, it's okay. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya said, oh, what happened? Why you changed your mind? And Chan Kazi said, well, last night, he said, after I broke the Madanga, after I'd been there and broke the Madanga, that night, this half lion, half man, beast, appeared on me in the night and he jumped on me and he held me by the throat. And he threatened me, he said, if you ever break my Madanga again, I will rip you to shreds. And he took his claws and he rubbed his claws right across the chest. And the Chan Kazi opened his shirt and he saw the big scratches right across his chest. So this way, uh, Chan Kazi told Lord Chaitanya, he said, from now on I'm not going to interfere with thank you. And he said, as long as my descendants live, none of them will ever interfere with the Sankirtan. And today, even down to today, nobody ever stopped the Sankirtan. 
although there are many Mohammedans there in Mayapur, but even in the time of the partition, they never stopped the Sankirtan. So that is the credit of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Chankasi, his nickname was Champak. So they had a big, if you go to the Samadhi of the Chankazi, in, in Mayapur there's the Samadhi of the Chankazi, it's a holy place, and there's this big Champaka tree, it's been growing there for 500 years, it's huge, and there's a Neem tree also. The Neem tree is Lord Chaitanya, and the Champaka tree, the Chankazi, the two trees are growing together. So this was one wonderful pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was still a young man, but he led that civil disobedience movement. So he was feeling the separation from Krishna. He was in the mood of the gopis. He was feeling. So one day Lord Chaitanya was chanting the names of the gopis. So one of the students who he was teaching, one of the students came and said, Why are you chanting the names of the gopis? Why don't you chant Krishna's name? So Lord Chaitanya, he was in the mood of the gopis when the gopis get man, when they're angry towards Krishna. You know sometimes the gopis will be angry to Krishna because Krishna, you know, is a mischievous person. You know? <laughs> so sometimes he get angry, sometimes Radharani will not speak to Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya was in that mood, he didn't want to, uh, he was in that mood of ang anger towards Krishna. And this boy, this student, stupid student came and said, chant the name of Krishna, don't chant the names of the gopis. So Lord Chaitanya picked up a stick and chased him. <laughs> and the student ran away. The student ran away and he went and told all the other boys. I said, let Nimai Pandits become too, so proud, he wanted to beat me. So all the students said, what? He's going to beat you, we will beat him. And they were all going to come. They all wanted to beat Nimai Pandit. They wanted to beat Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya thought, this is not very good. He thought, I've come to deliver the world. I've come to deliver everyone. It's Patita Pavan. Come to deliver the fallen souls. But if they will beat me, then they will all go to hell. So Lord Chaitanya thought, what should I, I will take sannyas. If I take sannyas, then they will all respect me. So this is one reason why Lord Chaitanya took sannyas. Because once he takes sannyas, then everyone will offer respect. Another reason why Lord Chaitanya took sannyas was they were having kirtan every night in Srivas Angam. One smarter Brahman, he wanted to come to the kirtan. They, they, took, they said, no, no, it's only for devotees. When you only have devotees at the kirtan, then it's very pure, very powerful spiritual atmosphere. Lord Chaitanya, they had not made it public yet. So they were still having private kirtans. So they told the Brahman, sorry, you can't come. So the Brahmana said, if I cannot come, then I curse you. And the Brahmana took his thread, he broke his thread. He said, I curse you. You will never enjoy material life. <laughs> Do you like that curse? <laughs> yeah? Do you want that curse? You will never enjoy material life. Okay? Yes. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Lord Chaitanya say Haribo! Haribo! <laughs> you can enjoy spiritual life, not no. material life. So Lord Chaitanya, although he was 24 years of old, 24 years of age, and he had a wife, very nice wife, very pleasant, very young girl, Vishnu Priya, and he had his mother, Sachi, elderly mother, but he left there. And 
Why did he leave home? To deliver the world. If you stay at home, you can deliver the wife and the mother. <coughs> but he, he thought big. He wanted to deliver the world. So he left the home. He swam across the Ganga and went to Katwa and went to the ashram of Keshava Bharati. <coughs> And in the ashram of Keshava Bharati, they give him sannyas. But it was a very painful thing. The pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are compared to the pastime of Krishna. Just like the kirtan in Srivas Thakur's home, that is like Rasa Lila. And Krish Krishna leaving the gopis and going to Mathura, that is like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taking sannyas. He's renouncing the world. So people were all crying. They, they didn't like to shave his hair. He had beautiful long black hair and the barber didn't want to shave the head. He didn't want to cut the hair off. After he cut the hair off, he vowed, I will never shave another head. He said, now I'm going to make sweets. I'll get a job as a sweet maker instead of a barber. So the hair from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that was put in samadhi. And if you go to Katwa, there's a samadhi of the hair of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Chaitanya had taken sannyas. And he said, now I want to go to Vrindavan. So Lord Nityananda said, oh, that's way, that way, that's the way to Vrindavan. <laughs> and they came to the river, it was the Ganga, and Lord Chaitanya said, is this your Yamuna? And Lord Nityananda said, yeah, this is the Yamuna. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually the Ganga. And so Lord Chaitanya was happy, he was walking, and he thought he was going to Vrindavan. And then suddenly Advaita Acharya appeared in a boat. And Lord Chaitanya said, Hey, Advaita Acharya, what are you doing here in Vrindavan? <laughs> and Advaita Acharya said, My Lord, wherever you are, that is Vrindavan. Because Mahaprabhu is Krishna. So Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So wherever he goes, wherever Mahaprabhu is, that is Vrindavan. So anyway, Lord Nityananda tricked Lord Chaitanya and they brought him to Shantipur, to the home of Advaita Acharya. And then they called all the devotees to come from Mayapur, everyone except Lord Chaitanya's wife. Wife cannot come because now he's a sannyasi. So, sannyasi means walking dead man. Yeah. You know any walking dead man? <laughs> walking dead man means no material responsibility, no family, no connections with the material world. Just like Prabhupada, Prabhupada was going to America he came to Calcutta to get on the ship, Jaladutta. Now his family was there in Calcutta, but he did not go to see them because he was a sannyasi. So he doesn't go home again. One son came to see him, but he didn't go to see them. That's it, Vedic custom. So Lord Chaitanya, was there in Shantipur, Mother Sachi came and all the devotees came and they saw Mahaprabhu and they saw him. Before he was having nice long black hair, now he has a shaved head and he's, now he's wearing very simple khadi cloth of the sannyasi, unstitched. And before he would wear nice silk clothes, and, but now he's dressed very simply as a sannyasi. So, it was a big change. They were, Mother Sachi was shocked. 
the Lord Chaitanya said, I will give up. He said, I, you know, he said to Mother Sachi, I did it very quickly. I did it on the spur of the moment. I did it without thinking. He said, I will come home with you, Mother Sachi. But Mother Sachi said, oh, no, no, don't do that. Because if you break your vow of sannyas, that will be very bad. So better you, better you keep your vow of sannyas. But Mother Sachi asked him, don't go to Vrindavan, because so far away, I will not get you. Just go to Puri, go to Jagannath Puri, Jagannath Puri and Mayapur, two rooms in the same house, just like in the house, right? Two rooms and whatever's going on in the other room, you know about it, right? So go, you go to Puri, then I will get news about you regularly. So Lord Chaitanya promised Mother Sachi he would go to Puri. And he went to Puri and devotees also went with him. They also followed him. They went with him to Jagannath Puri. And on the way there, Lord Chaitanya, he had his danda, sannyasi danda, the stick which they carry. Lord Nityananda broke it. Lord Chaitanya had given the danda to somebody, to Lord Nityananda to carry, and Lord Nityananda broke it and threw it away. <laughs> so after some time, Lord Chaitanya said, where's my danda? And Lord Nityananda said, oh, don't you remember? We were having kirtan, and you jumped. You jumped up, and you landed on the danda, and it broke. <laughs> so I threw it away. Lord Chaitanya said, what? He, threw, he said, that was my only possession. He said, I'm sannyasi, I've given up everything. My only possession was that danda. You've not taken care of it. He said, I'm not going to go with you anymore. He said, you, you can either, he said, I will go first or you can go. I'm not going with you. I don't want to go with you. <laughs> so, so they said to Lord Chaitanya, they said, okay, you go ahead. You, we will come behind. So Lord Chaitanya ran ahead and he ran to Jagannath Puri and he got to Jagannath Puri and he came in the temple and he saw Lord Jagannath and he fell on the floor in front of Lord Jagannath and went into trance, in samadhi, unconscious. He was so ecstatic to see Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya came to Jagannath Puri and Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya was the head priest and he saw this young sannyasi and the men came, the, gun, the pandits came, they had their sticks, they were going to beat him because if anybody comes, if they make too much trouble or disturb there, they'll just beat them with sticks. So they were going to beat Chaitanya, but, but Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya would not let them beat him. He said, no, no, wait. And he got some cotton and he put it in front of the nostrils. And he saw that he that Mahaprabhu was in a very deep trance. So he said, "Take him to my home." So they took Chaitanya. They picked him up and carried him to the home of Sarva Mama Bhattacharya. So later on, all the other devotees came. Lord Nityananda, other devotees came, and they got to the temple and they said, "Where's Where's Mahaprabhu? Where's <coughs> Lord Chaitanya?" They could not find him anywhere. And then they asked, that they told him, oh, he had come, he had fainted, and he'd been taken to the home of Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya. So then they went to the home of Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya, and they all chanted, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. And when they chanted, then Mahaprabhu came back to consciousness and came back again. So they were all reunited. And Mahaprabhu, he made Puri his headquarters. First 24 years were spent in Mayapur, and second 24 <coughs> years spent in Jagannath Puri. Well, actually six years, for six years he traveled around India. So 18 years in Puri. And while he was in Puri, 
every day saying kirtan, kirtan, giving the holy name to people. Lord Chaitanya brought the holy name out of the temple. Previously, the holy name was only chanted in the temple, and only the brahmanas could chant. But Lord Chaitanya brought the holy name, gave it to everyone, that everyone can chant the holy name. So this is Mahaprabhu, this is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Kali, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, at the eleventh canto, Karabhajana Muni is asked by Nimirat, <coughs> he's asked about the Lord's incarnations in each age. <coughs> the Lord comes in every age. In the Satya Yuga, he comes in a white color. In Trita Yuga, he comes in red color. In Dwapara Yuga, black color. In Kali Yuga, he will come, what color? Golden. golden. Yes, golden, yellow color, right? Golden. So, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Karabhajana Muni said, Krishna Varna Tavish Akrishnam Sangha Pangrasra Parshadam Yagnaye Sankirtan Praye Yajanti Hi Sumeda Saha. In the Kali Yuga, <coughs> intelligent people will join with the Lord to chant the holy name. Sumeda Saha. Sumeda Saha means they have a good brain and auspicious intelligence. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes Antavat tu palam tesham tad bhavati alpa medasham. Very small brain. Who has got a small brain? People who worship other gods other than Krishna. They're worshipping de demigods. They're trying to get material benefit. So that is the small brain. But the people with a good brain they will take part chanting the names of the Supreme Lord. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught everyone to chant the Sankirtan. Oh, getting late. Any question? Anyone? Krishna put Sakti in the Like now we go to school here, you say. Uh, Muhammadins, you can change them, but then children touch us. So do we convert to Muhammadins? <laughs> well, did you make them devotees? <laughs> Are you preaching to them? Yeah, when fine. Rupa, Rupa and Sanatan were serving Mohammedans. They were working in the government, and they were one was the minister, and one was the chap, one was in charge of all the, the the treasury. One was like the prime minister. They got and they had taken Muslim names, Dabir Kas, Sakaramal. So they heard about Lord Chaitanya, and they wrote to him. So Lord Chaitanya came to meet them. He came to a place called Ramakeli, not far from Kanai Natsala. Ramakeli, very special place, very beautiful place. You must go there and see Ramakeli. In district Malda, not far from Malda, in Bengal. So Ra Ramakeli, Ramakeli is famous in history. Not because of Rupa and Sanatan, but because of the person they worked for. Who did they work for? The Nawab, the Nawab, the Nawab Hussein Shah, right? The Nawab Emperor. And they, if you see the ruins, the ruins of the, when Nawab was there, huge, it built, it had huge, big building, you know, very big place. The, the structures they built were amazing. So Rupa and Sanatan were working for them, but Lord Chaitanya told them, leave this job. Don't stay in this. Because they're killing cows every day. They're killing the cows and eating cow meat. So not very good. 
not very good. You have to protect yourself by chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Right? If you chant the Hare Krishna mantra, then it will protect you. Sadhana. You know, we have to live in this world. You have to live in the world. So you have to protect yourself. You have to do sadhana. You have to wake up early in the morning. You have to chant Hare Krishna mantra, worship Krishna, and you have to read the books about Krishna. Then you'll be protected. Just like a doctor, they have to go and fight disease, right? So they have to make sure they don't get sick. So the same way, devotee, you have to live in the material world. You have to meet so many people who are not devotees. You have to protect yourself. How to protect yourself? By every day chanting the Lord's name, worshipping the Lord, and read the books about the Lord, then you can protect yourself. If you don't protect yourself, then you're in trouble. Yes? Uh, uh, <coughs> that was from, uh, uh, there is some, you know, mis mystery in the, you know, state of uh, mantra. Some people say something different. Mystery is talking about Mahatma who's passing away or leaving this world. Yeah. What? Yeah. He's saying there's some mystery around Mahatma who's leaving this world. Yes. Yeah. So what is the truth? Huh? What is the truth? What is the case? Well, there are different explanations how he departed from the world. Some say he entered into Tota Gopinath. There's a deity in Jainat Puri called Tota Gopinath. And they have a mark on the leg of the deity. And they say this is where he entered into the deity. And some other people say he entered into Lord Jagannath. Some people they just disappeared there in the temple of Lord Chakrana. The, you know, we have to understand the body of the Lord is not material. So he comes in this world, he comes his appearance is like the sun. And then he disappears. He leaves the world. So, Mahaprabhu, I had one doubt. Now, many people say that we have plenty of gods to pray. We have uh, the first thing that we have seen since childhood, our parents, our grandfathers, everyone, even in the uh, TV serials, we have seen that Shiv is the ultimate truth. Uh, that's what it, it was shown there. And then other gods came in. And then we also saw um, Sri Krishna's avatar in uh, when, with the way he has explained in Gita that I am the ultimate truth. So when it comes to this debate, which one? Can you enlighten us? Well, which that one? was the discussion. Uh, like Brigham Muni was asked by the demigods to go and test Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva and find out which one is actually supreme. So Brigham Muni went to Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma is the father of Brigham Muni. And so he did not bow to his father. He didn't respect him. So Brigham Muni was not pleased. He got ang he showed his anger. He didn't do anything, but he, was, he showed he was not pleased. So then he went to see Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is also born from Lord Brahma. So Lord Shiva is like a brother to Brigham Muni. So Lord Shiva came to approach Brigham Muni to embrace him. But Brigham Muni thought to Shiva, don't touch me. You're all ashes. You've got these snakes on your body. I don't want you to touch me. So Lord Shiva got very angry. He was going to kill him. And only Parvati had to come and she she had to restrain her husband and she told Brigham, you better run, save your life. 
And so Bhrigu left and then he went to see Lord Vishnu. And Lord Vishnu was laying there and Lakshmi was on his chest massaging. And Lord Vishnu, uh, Bhrigu Muni came and he kicked Lord Vishnu on the chest. And Lord Vishnu got up and said, Oh, my dear Bhrigu Muni, I hope you did not hurt your foot on my heart chest. So Lord Vishnu was so tolerant. Bhrigu Muni was shocked, you know, that he committed the greatest offense against Lord Vishnu. But Lord Vishnu did not take any discipline. So Lord Vishnu was so tolerant, he understood Lord Vishnu is completely in the mode of good. Above Brahma and Shiva. The relationship between Vishnu and Shiva, Vishnu is like milk and Shiva is like the dahi. Milk can be made into dahi, but dahi never becomes milk. So Vishnu can become Shiva, but Shiva never becomes Vishnu. That is the relationship between Vishnu and Shiva. <coughs> that could be possibly the reason that the Dasavataram that has happened, has happened in, in, by Lord Vishnu rather than other gods. What? Is that uh, the logic behind that? Incarnations. The, the incarnations that had happened, the ten avatarum that has happened. Well, the Dasa, you mean the Dasa Avatar Stotra? Yeah. But those are just ten, those are just the main ones. There are many, many other avatars. Right. Just Dayadev Goswami wrote that song, he picked ten, he just wrote about ten, but there's many, many others. If you read the other scriptures, you'll see there's so many different names of avatars, many, many avatars. And so the, those are ten are just some of them. Thank you, Ram. <coughs> but they are, who, where do they all come from? The, the, they, the avatars <coughs> come from Vishnu. And Lord Krishna, he is not avatar, he is avatari, that Vishnu also comes from Krishna. Vishnu is the expansion of Krishna. Lord Krishna is the original Swayam Bhagavan and Lord Vishnu comes from Lord Krishna. Example is given, just like you have a candle, you, from one candle you can light other candles. So the heat and light in the candles is the same, but there's one original candle. And who is that original candle? That is Lord Krishna. So it's Lord Krishna who is the original Supreme Lord and Lord Vishnu comes from him. Lord Vishnu is Purusha avatar. There are Purusha avatars. It means that they are responsible for the creation. Brahma, we say, creates. Vishnu maintains. Shiva annihilates. But the primary creation is done by Vishnu before Brahma. Brahma does the secondary part of creation. The initial creation is done by Vishnu. The elements, the different elements of creation are all created by Lord Vishnu. And then Lord Brahma comes and he does it. He's like the engineer. He takes all the parts. He takes all the different elements and puts them together, combines them. So Brahma is like that. Brahma is in charge of the mode of passion, Rajagun. Vishnu is in charge, Sattvagun, the mode of goodness. And Shiva is Tamagun, in charge of Tamagun. Lord Shiva, he is a Vaishnava. We say Vaishnavam Yata Shambhu. Lord Shiva Shambhu is the greatest Vaishnava. He is very kind. He delivers a lot of fallen souls. He will deliver, he will be very kind to them and bring them up, especially people like ghosts and so on. He can deliver them. He helps them to get a body. So Lord Shiva is God of the material world. But there's another, above Lord Shiva, there's Vishnu. And above Vishnu, Krishna. There are many qualities which are found in Shiva. 
There are more qualities found in Vishnu and there's still more qualities found in Krishna. <clears throat> Lord Krishna is the reservoir of all rasas. Lord Vishnu, the relationship with Vishnu is only servant, dashara, vaikuntha. That is the mood of vaikuntha. But Lord Krishna, he enjoys all different kinds of rasas. So Lord Rama, Lord Rama, he is also like uh, a special form of Vishnu. He, is, he also has his eternal associates, his devotees. Lord Rama is a king. He is Maryada avatar. He shows the perfect example, perfect behavior. So Lord Rama is an expansion of Vishnu, a special form of Vishnu. So he has a place also in Vaikuntha, Ayodhya. But Krishna has his own abode, Goloka, above Vaikuntha. And Mahavishnu, he likes to meet Krishna. He's anxious to see Krishna. Uh, <clears throat> when we uh, do chantings and prayings, uh, give, Lord, God gives us some pres uh, show uh, their presence to us sometime, like in feelings or some, mm -hmm. some like any kind of feelings the God gives us. Any kind of feelings. Feeling. The the the. He's asking if we experience Krishna's presence in feelings. Like we are when we are in the chanting and we are doing praise, something like that. Yes, definitely, Krishna is. His name, there's no difference between yes. Krishna and His name. So when you're chanting the name of Krishna, you're, you're with Krishna. Krishna's with you. He's dancing on your tongue. But sometimes when we proceed with the... First we are doing one mala before when we join the Bhakti Vrisham. And then we start doing, increasing the mala. Yeah. And uh, now we are, I'm doing six mala. But now I am become neutral, means before it was more uh, interest in doing, but now it's like neutral to, like I am doing six mala, but it's like day to day job now. It's the, the interest become less, so I am thinking in that way. Well, you have to keep chanting. You have to, sometimes it gets like, you think like that, you think that when it's new, something new, it's more exciting, more interesting. But after some time you become familiar, you think, oh, it's the same, we don't feel so much. But you have, you have to understand that the holy name is there and that holy name is Krishna. And we have to, we have to develop a, a feeling for that relationship with Krishna. So Prabhupada said, when we chant, we should chant just like a child calls for the mother. The child will cry to get the mother. So we should chant in that mood like we are children and Krishna is the father and we want to be with him. So the chanting will usually when we chant it's like a Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So it can be any kind of uh, flow or any kind of uh, like the voice we can do like in some music kind of thing like in our tongue it can be an yes any 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 kind of yeah chant. Mm -hmm. yeah you can chant anyway there are no hard and fast rules you can chant anyway yes yeah. and we can chant any everywhere means everywhere we yes can. anytime any place Krishna <laughs> 
Bharat uh, is asking, uh, we are going uh, through many birth and death, and also we are doing many sins, sinful activities. Is it possible if we come in this life to Krishna, Krishna consciousness, and we get the uh, Bhagavad Dham? Yeah, but you have to stop sin. <laughs> <laughs> Mataji was a person. Mara was a person. He 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 no illicit sex. Maharaj is asking if we follow these four regular principles. Is it possible to go back to Godhead? No, you have to chant Hare Krishna. You have to chant 16, minimum 16 rounds. It's not Maybe just follow not four principles. <laughs> 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 Maharaj is telling, Maharaj is telling, Maharaj is telling, that these four principles are the same as Hare Krishna Mahamantra Kirtan. Minimum, Sarvanimna, Solomala. Okay, I mean, 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 I so, Maharaj, uh, she is asking, she is going to, she already decided that I will chant 16 mala every day and follow this four regulatory principle. Is it possible in this life go back to Godhead? Yes, it's possible. Why not? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, I think